Good morning, everybody. Welcome to KZN Top Business and KZN Top Business Masterclass on LinkedIn. We're with Andy Gwynn again. It's come around pretty quickly. Andy, welcome. Thank you. You're right, it's come around pretty quick. We're just talking about how fast our lives go. No, it's absolutely incredible. You know, it's in, here in South Africa, um, COVID was, has disappeared. Our president said there's no more COVID. So we're back into the fast flowing lanes and we've got everybody at sport. We've got everything happening, businesses opening up. So that attitude of positivity was what I'm quite keen to, to plug into. So, so getting back to the, the LinkedIn vibe and stimulating people to use LinkedIn the way they should be. And um, I'm one of those people who use LinkedIn a hell of a lot, but I learned so much from what you did last week. A lot of you said I knew, said I actually knew, but hadn't done. So went back and improved my profile and looked up to what I'm doing. And believe it or not, it actually works. So I'm not going to say too much, Andy. You jump in, say what you've got to say, and then afterwards, everybody online, think positively what he's doing or whatever it might be. And then get those questions so Andy can make it interactive as much as possible because it's important. You ask the question, sometimes the answer is that simple that Andy's got it, or I might even have it. So Andy, the floor is yours. Thank you, Grant. Um, and it's great to hear about South Africa because I'm, I'm based and live down in Southern Spain. I'm from the UK, fly back three or four times a year, and we're getting, we've still got COVID um, in Spain and especially in the UK. So it's great that you've got that news and you've got that sort of positive vibe because when's the best now time? Um, we hear there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on globally um, in the markets as well as as well as socially. Um, and people still succeed in times of harshness. I think we know that. So now is always a good opportunity. And I think especially so with LinkedIn and business and, and marketing. Um, and we're here because... Um, you said I'm going to jump in and you've got a lot from it, which is great. I'm going to urge people to make notes because I'm here because of uh, Marlene Powell, who introduced me to you. You're doing a lot of work with her on her marketing, her assets, a video. And we're going to touch on that. Uh, and Marlene helps people grow the whole of their business. I niche into helping people with LinkedIn, which filters into marketing. But you can't just touch one part of business without it impacting elsewhere. So we're going to talk about how to get inbound, how to generate leads, how to generate inquiries and start talking to prospects or customers or any contacts you want to get to. Um, and then Marlene's really the one that beyond that, her and I work together. She's got some amazing results from what we've been doing at this end, driving conversations and inquiries to her through her LinkedIn activity. But then it's her end that's picking it up and making the sales. So there's no point just marketing without sales. And, and I am passionate that most people in business, I think the thing that they often don't learn enough of is marketing and sales, because for most people, that's not the reason they went into business. Uh, and I think I'm fortunate because my background was sales before I went into business for myself. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to recap a little bit from the last session, because we've had an amazing amount of views of the recording on YouTube after Grant was saying, um, and I did make an offer back then that said, when you make the changes on your profile, message me um, and I will critique them. And, and I can because of the way Grant and Marlene and I are working together, because I just love the fact of I love what you guys have got. And I love how you're helping other businesses over there in South Africa. And, and I, I can create the time to do that because of the way we're working so closely. And it's interesting how few people actually did that. Um, we know how many people have viewed the, the, this session or the last session and the recording um, because my background, like Marlene's, is that of a business coach. And, and what I say, I see so much trauma, so many people struggling in business because they are just not as effective as they could be. They haven't learned necessarily what they want to do. And I bring it back to marketing and sales is often the, the central hub. And it's such a shame because it's so possible. Um, and so as a business coach, what I say to people is I don't care what you think about me. And when you look at my profile and you look at this, people have a lot of thoughts about me. I don't care. I care about what you go away and do. So make as many notes as possible, because what we're doing here um, every other month is running a session like this. And we have recapped slightly on what we did at the last one, um, because I'm, I'm sort of shoehorning into what I used to run as a 12 session, 12 week coaching program. 
And we're not going to do that over 24 months. We're doing that over a much shorter period of time. So I'm, I'm sort of giving you lots of stuff um, in each session. So I urge you to make notes. And more than that, I urge you to go away and do something because it's easy not to. Human psychology is it's easy not to. Write this down. I have a formula for success, which is MA times RS times C equals R. Now, for the detailed analytical scientists, accountants out there, you'll hate this. It stands for massive action. Times the right stuff. Times consistently equals results. And if you think about it, I just, I've just replied to a competitor's post who posted something on LinkedIn saying, uh, as a poll, how many connections um, a week do you do? And I do more than the most he asked for. So I said, I actually do more. Um, because you will hear things out there that LinkedIn have changed something, LinkedIn have restricted what you can do. Yes, it's true, but it's not to 100. It's algorithmic based. But the point I make is for Marlene, for example, we are sending out up to 200 invites per week to her ideal contacts and prospects. Think about that. That's massive action. That's more than most people are ever doing. You can always do more. But if your connection invite is poor, if you look just hitting people with cold sales. If you're targeting the wrong people, if it's massive action times zero equals zero. So these sessions are all about the right stuff, how to do it in the right way. But you can take massive action. I can send out 200 invites this week. My connection invite can be well targeted. It can be well written, well positioned. But if I do it for one week and then nothing, massive action times the right stuff times zero equals zero. So if you're not getting the results you want in your business, your marketing, LinkedIn, your personal lives, have a look at which of those three do you need to work on. And for human beings, often the consistency thing is the hardest. You've just been talking about sports, and I know you guys are passionate about sport. My father's a Welshman, um, and I love watching Wales play the Springboks, you know. Um, but you ask, a, you ask a top sportsman about consistency to diet, to training, to fitness. They are consistent. Most of us will do a few things and then stop, or it's easy not to. The human brain is wired to do what it did yesterday because that's what kept you alive and safe. I didn't go bust yesterday, so I'll carry on marketing the way I am today. And, and the challenge is to do something different. So I urge you to implement some of this. Um, so let's go back to why you should be on LinkedIn, really. There's now 700 plus million profiles in the, in the world, personal profiles, not company pages. By the way, any questions you've got, drop them in the chat. We'll cover them towards the end. Um, so I'm going to cover some things off, but I know that people here have got their own focus, their own questions around LinkedIn. Chuck them in the chat. Even if it's off topic of what we're covering today, I'll answer them. Um, where was I going with that? There was a massive, so LinkedIn's nearly 20 years old. There's now 700 million people around the world on LinkedIn. I think we Googled it when I started working with Marlene. And there was about 7 million in South Africa. You guys have got a purple patch, an absolute gold mine, because it might be smaller numbers than elsewhere in the world, but it's new. She's getting such great results compared to people in her industry in other countries because people are not being engaged with by LinkedIn. She's getting to business owners. She's getting a response. She's getting a conversation and a relationship. It, it's virgin territory relatively. So you've got an even bigger incentive to be using it. Um, people are now checking you out on LinkedIn. The reality now is people can, people can decide what they want to buy before they've even spoken with you. I went and bought a new car a few weeks ago. We checked out the mate, model, engine size, color, price, trim, everything online. We knew exactly what we wanted and, and what we were wanting to pay. When we walked into the dealership, the salesman had no job to do. He couldn't sell me anything. Um, we knew what we'd already wanted. So people are checking you out on LinkedIn. Uh, if you Google my name, first up should be my LinkedIn profile. You will get found more. So if you're not on it, you need to be on it. Um, if you're on it and not using it, you're missing massive opportunities to be using it. So that's the reason why you should be on it. And it will serve you for life. It isn't just business. I said we're in southern Spain. I, we bought a house down here four years ago. I found my Spanish English speaking lawyer and my Spanish English speaking mortgage broker within 24 hours of going to my network on LinkedIn and saying, who do you know? Think about net LinkedIn as an online marketing tool, biggest, probably best business to business and business to professional 
I had a lady said yesterday said, I'm not sure that it's right for me. I sell to the business to the consumer. I said, Who are you selling to? She was selling um trauma coaching to Joe Public, but her target were professionals who could afford it. So they were the business owners, the lawyers, the doctors, the accountants, the professionals. Absolutely, LinkedIn is, is perfect for that. Think of it as an online networking tool. Um where was I going to go with that? You may have heard of the saying that your network equals your net worth. It's not so much just what we know, it's who we know. And so you should be building connections for life. I quoted, I think, on the last session, my middle nephew. I have three, three, boy, three nephews in their 20s. When he was 18, in between college and university or the first term of university, he got an internship in Hong Kong from the UK at the age of 21. Um, from somebody you network with on LinkedIn. So kids, young adults are utilizing LinkedIn. LinkedIn's got a massive job board. Um, we'll touch on jobs a little bit, but the, the philosophy of what we're talking about now is relevant to jobs. 60% of LinkedIn's revenue is recruitment. Um, if you're looking to recruit, go look at the LinkedIn job board. It's huge. I have a, a friend, client of mine who's a property developer. He recruits his project managers, his management team purely through using LinkedIn um it's, it's powerful so look at it as an online network you should be building connections and what we talked about last time i'm going to check that um i can share my screen um grant you need to enable that for me so i can share my screen i'm going to take you through some more of my profile um i said there were two sides to linkedin um i'm still waiting for permission to be able to share my screen um, there's two sides to linkedin which i'm going to keep reinforcing the first is your personal profile, which needs to do three things and write these down. It needs to get found, needs to give value to the reader, and it needs to prove your credibility. And, and I used to not put a lot of emphasis on that last one. I do now because it is the world is so busy and so small. Um, there was a massive surge of explosion of usage at the beginning of COVID because everybody was locked down. I remember delivering. I deliver through some automation on how to connect a message. I've said I've been doing that with Marlene. I had a client in New Zealand and he said, I'm seeing all my corporate purchasing directors, clients, prospects on LinkedIn. I said, really? No, no surprise. They're locked down in their home office. They've, they've got to be. And that, that usage has stayed. So that's why, again, we're in an even bigger purple patch. But because the world's smaller, that's why it's even more important than ever that you've got to prove your credibility. Your profile's got to get found, give value to the reader. This is your marketing. I'm going to keep hammering and prove your credibility. And then your strategy is what you do to go and find, connect in the right way and engage in the right way with your ideal contact. For a lot of you, that will be your ideal sales prospect. There is no point going to go and connect and engage if when they look at your profile, you lose them, it's ineffective. So on the last session, we touched on the top few sections of the profile. I'm going to share my um, I'm going to share my screen now. Let me grant. Thank you. You've given me permission. Um, let's uh, make sure um, you should now be able to see my profile. What we covered last time was what you need to do with the banner. So if you weren't on the last session, go to YouTube, go to Grant and go and have a look at it because we covered how to make your profile stand out with your profile, what to do with a photo so that it engages and creates rapport and sells yourself really. Um, this is a marketing tool. Every section we need to use to, you, to serve us. Now, there'll be a lot of people out there with a lot of thoughts and comments about things about LinkedIn I don't like, I'm not comfortable with this. Rule number one is LinkedIn is huge. We've said that. LinkedIn is a law unto themselves. They're, they're hypocrites. They contradict themselves. They say you shouldn't at some level. They don't like you connecting with people you don't know. That's bonkers. It's saying here there's people I should know and I can just connect with them. I don't know these people. I might have connections of connections somewhere. So they're, they're hypocrites and they contradict themselves. And my view is if you don't like something tough, if you want to work with me and you want to get results, then let's get over it, under it, around it, and let's utilize it to serve us. And let's utilize each section of the profile from a marketing perspective to serve us. So I talked about what sort of photo, how to, why that's important, how to use it. Again, with your name, how to make it simple. Think of this as your landing page, uh, your window to the world. 
how to create a headline that gets attention, whereas a lot of these head of UK general real estate doesn't stand out, doesn't do anything, doesn't tell me what you do for me. Um, there are ways of just swapping the profile around, but the key things I talked about back then on the last section was the about section. And LinkedIn's playing around. Here we go, the about section where you've got a lot of space to create from a marketing perspective. Go look at the last one on what I mean about WIFM, writing it so it's what's in it for the reader. The reader doesn't, your clients don't care about you. They care about what you can do for them. And that's how mo for most people and most people I've worked with and most people I've, I've been talking to business owners and working with business owners for 20 years. Most of them talk about themselves. That's another human trait. We're not consistent. <laughs> We're wired to repeat what we did yesterday. And we love to talk about ourselves. It's about talking about what you can do for your prospect, your client. We then talked about the experience section, how to build on that so that people can find the information they want, how you could split it. I'm going to come back to some of that in a little while. I'm going to move through the other sections. The way to think about this, uh, and I have a document called the nine points to create a powerful profile. I think there's possibly 10 sections here now. Somebody said to me the other day, do you put much emphasis on SSI index, which is a score LinkedIn gives you? I said, no, not really. But if you populate each section, you'll get a, a as pretty much a high an SSI index as you can. And that just allows you to get found even more. So my rule is let's populate each section. I didn't do a lot of when I was young in education. I, I didn't go to college. Well, I did for one term. I didn't go to university. I probably learned more. I've studied more in the last 36 days on Duolingo studying Spanish than I've probably studied since I became a diving instructor nearly 30 years ago. But this, I do a lot with real estate investors and real estate training companies and their, and their students. And so this guy is, runs one of the biggest property training businesses in the UK. I studied with him. Um, I am into psychology. And, and so I've put some in there to populate it. Because originally I was thinking, oh, it's not relevant. But you never know what people see when they visit your profile. Um, Marlene, I'll keep referring to it. You've got to go connect with her. Um, we were talking yesterday and she said, the great thing with this is you're driving the conversations inbound. You're taking care of all the connecting, messaging, all the grunt, and you're just leaving me to respond to well-targeted, well-qualified inbound messages. She said, but what's great is I can go look at their profile before I speak with them and I can, I can see what they're about. We've got rapport on the phone or on Zoom from moment one and we... I was in the same business with her. We, we met in 2008. I've taught people to sell in the same way she does. Um, and it's about creating rapport, but it's a about finding commonality. I don't know about you guys in South Africa, but the Brits are great about talking about the weather. I rang a colleague, colleague of mine yesterday. They're having a heat wave in the UK. I know that because they're getting the weather from Southern Spain and Africa. And he said, what's the weather like? I said, really? Can we talk about something else? Um, you want to find commonality. So the fact here I've put that I volunteered and mentored school kids. Why did I put that? Well, there's a bit of commonality if someone else is into volunteering. Um, but it's also I've got a passion about helping kids because I think most of the stuff and the baggage and, and the resistance and the, and the lack of results that adults get is, is from what they grew up with, maybe. But I can look at someone and say, oh, we've just talked about commonality in south africa and, and rugby so it's you you, you want to be populating these sections to help the reader but you never know who sees something and go oh actually i've mentored school kids these guys we've got something in common i'll connect with them your skills you want to populate now this is one i get people say oh i don't really like this people have endorsed me and i don't even know them some of you will have had that i had that the other day um but remember my rules that the the section is there, so let's utilize it to serve us. So here's a bit of a hack. Rather than just the skills you think you're good at, what are the skills, if you look at them as search terms, that you might want to get found for? So I had, was working with a business owner who was an MD, and he put his skills as management and leadership and communication. And I said, what do you want to attract people for? He said, we want to sell cleaning materials. So why don't you put in your skills? You know, health and safety cleaning advice advice um, 
cleaning supplier of the year or cleaning supplies as, as a skill. And he hadn't thought of that. Now, if so think about what are the skills as search terms that you want to be found for. But then really, to build the credibility, I said your profile is going to get found, give value. We covered value in those top sections on the last session. Prove your credibility. This is part of that. You then need endorsements because you can see here I've got 99 plus endorsements. People you know, their attention spans are small. We make, we make, a, um, we make an opinion within microseconds or seconds of seeing something or somebody. So that gives me great credibility. Now, I don't put huge value on skills for that reason that people endorse me and I don't even know them. I had a guy endorse me the other day. My automation is set up that it thanks people for it. And he came back and said something. Oh, can you endorse me? I said, no, I can't. I don't know you. We've never worked together. I have no idea what you, know, what you do, with it, whether you're any good. I suggest if you want a conversation about how you can utilize LinkedIn in a better way, within your LinkedIn marketing strategy, I'm happy to chat to you. But I still want to go and get endorsements just to build it up to this 99 plus. So the way, the way I would suggest doing that, you go and endorse people you know you can endorse. You, you contact your network. There is a great, another psychological law called the, the law of reciprocity. If I give you something at some deep human level, we feel compelled to give back. Um, BNI is a global networking organization you may know of their, their mantra is give us gain if i give you something you feel compelled to give back was it zig ziglar who said i can get anything i want in life uh, if i just help people get what they want so i don't spend a lot of time doing this but i will periodically and i can automate this as well I, i'll go out and endorse people that i genuinely know they tend to endorse me back so you certainly want to build that list of skills to get found as search terms and to build some credibility now, the next section, <coughs> excuse me, for, me, for this, for me, is far more powerful. And this is recommendations. Uh, we call them testimonials. Americans call them recommendations. You know, if I were to ask you, how many of you get business through word of mouth? Whenever I ask an audience, it's usually everybody. Um, and then if I say to you, is that business the, or that inquiry, that referral lead, the easiest to sell to out of all the leads you generate from your marketing. Yes, referral leads, referral business is the easiest to sell to. Fine. So do you have a strategy in place to ask all of your clients and all of your network for referrals? And invariably, most people, and I'm talking 99%, I think, say no. It's ad hoc. So I'm referring back to Marlene Powell. You've got to go connect with her. You've got to talk about that because we all get referrals. We all know it's the easiest to sell to because people buy from people. If Grant says to somebody, you absolutely need to go speak with, or Marlene says, you need to go speak with Andy. Here's the results I've got with working with him on LinkedIn. He's the best guy I've ever worked with and I've known him 14 years. And you contact me, it's pretty much, it's going to be an easier sale. So what are you doing to generate referrals? Now, obviously to get referrals, recommendations stroke testimonials are powerful. Now, the thing with this is, these people have to go out of their way and type this. So I will go and thank them. I will ask them for it. But here's the, here's the crux of this. Most people aren't good at how to give a powerful testimony. In the last section, uh, session, we talked about how to write your about section, your experience sections from a point of what's in it for the reader. So it's powerful. Same applies to testimonials. Um, I've just got a great video testimonial. If you message me and you want to see it, it's of Marlene in South Africa. She's talking about the amount of connection invites we've grown, the amount of sales she's made, the amount of attendees to her event she's got. It's specific. Most people, and I have, if you look at this, LinkedIn tells you I've got 142 recommendations. A lot of credibility there. Now, if you go into those, there's some that are a lot of fluff, what I call fluff. Oh, Andy was really great to work with. Um, he taught me some things, it's changed my life. Doesn't tell the reader specifically enough. Um, I'm not gonna critique all of these because this one's fairly recently. Here's something else with recommendations is they're dated. Now, all right, I haven't got one for a year, but I've used testimonial recommendations elsewhere, but I got this one from my client, Steve, uh, only last month. So if you haven't got any testimonials, recommendations on there for the last five years, what are people gonna think when they visit your profile? But the, the power of this is you can use these elsewhere. I can send these out on my social media. I can send them out in my quotes. I can send them to people before I speak to them. I can put them on my websites. 
So you need to be ca capturing testimonials wherever you're going. And a great start point is here on LinkedIn. I've now got a bank, I've got a file on my system where I've got hundreds of testimonials, but I've got them split into different industries, different product types. So I'll give you a great example. I have a share of another business in the UK and, and years ago, um, we sent a quote into one of the local councils and we didn't get the business. And part of our process was to ask why, why didn't we get it? And the lady there, we knew, and she said, you know what? I hadn't really thought about it. Thinking about it, you quoted on time. You quoted for everything we asked for. Your price was very similar. She said, do you know what it was? You had said at the bottom of your tender, your proposal, if you'd like to see some testimonials from other councils we have served, there's the key thing. Why would I give you a testimonial from a printer if you're a diamond cutter? I said earlier, create commonality. If I'm buying from you, I don't want to see a testimonial from someone who's bought a motorbike if I'm trying to buy a car from your same showroom. She said, you put at the bottom of your proposal, if you'd like to see a testimonial, any testimonials from other councils we've worked for, please just ask. Your competitor included those testimonials in their tender, and we just couldn't be bothered to ring you. Fortunately, it was a two grand sale, not a 20 grand sale or a 200 grand sale. Guess what we've been doing consistently since then? That's human nature. human nature. Humans are lazy. Humans will do what is easy. You have to make it easy for them to find you. Easy for them to find the information on your profile that's relevant to them. That's what we talked about, splitting the experience section. Easy to find what they need. I, I messed up a sales call years ago. It was a very it was a, a financial advisor. And I'm generalizing. We know that they're very risk averse. They're very detailed. That's what makes them good IFAs. Partway through my sales call, he said, how do I know you can help me? And I went, I, I might get a bit short sometimes. And I said, um, have you had a look at any of the 142 testimonials, recommendations on my profile or any of the video testimonials on my various sites? He said, no. I said, can, can I suggest that you do have a look at them and then come back to me and tell me how you think I can help you? Because if you've got enough of these and the right ones, then you shouldn't even have to sell the sale should be made i used to have many years ago i had a i put three his suggestion i put three of my clients um in a hotel room for a day i got a video company we came we interviewed them on why did they buy from me what have they experienced since working with me as this was as a coach before i got into linkedin i got into linkedin in 2010 in a, in a, in a big way and why would you what results have you had and why would you recommend me and I'd got three clients because one had created um, a lot more money in his business. Someone else was working a lot less hours. He put a team in place or he, he, he was leveraging his time. And the third one had, had grown his team and recruited. So there were three diff three niches that I sold to. So we captured all these on video and I put it out there. I had a guy message me and say, can you train my sales team? Here's some more gold for some of you. Because most people will go, yeah, let's talk. I said, yeah, of course I can. Let's talk. Just out of interest, where did you f get my name from? And he said, well, I saw your video testimonial and I thought you must be good. Oh, I said, what made you call me? Because there are a gazillion sales trainers out there. He said, I saw your video testimonials and thought you must be good. I said, okay, thank you very much. Um, just out of interest, how many other training companies are you talking to? He said, none. Why? I said, no reason. Let's talk. And made the sale because he'd seen the video testimonials, and I'll come on to videos in a second. I cannot, un cannot overemphasize where testimonials, recommendations, and getting referrals are so powerful, and this is where LinkedIn is powerful, because you can push this out. I can share these testimonials. I can, I can mention Steve in one of my posts, compliment him, and push it out. Um, think about where you can be using these. Now, the art to asking for a great testimonial is, Steve might say, I want to send you one, or, the best time is when you've just got a result. Hey, Steve, that's a great result. Would you mind giving me a testimonial recommendation on LinkedIn, stating exactly the results you've got? I said, yeah. I said, would, would you mind when you do it, would you mind stating what made you decide to buy from me in the first place? What was it specifically that you were looking for? What specifically are the results you've got that have worked for you? And why would you recommend me? And I've had clients that go, yeah, would you write that? And I say, well, 
sometimes you can argue about you know it would make more sense coming from you in your words but if someone's very very busy i'll go yes i will i'll send it to you will you post it or i'll send them those questions via email or via linkedin so that and i get people just answer them now some of these guys you'll see haven't followed that but you want to get your client to get be specific in why did they what was the point of difference that made them decide to buy from you in the first place what was it a most value they got from dealing with you what specific results have they got or what as specifically as it meant to them and why would they recommend you so you want to be capturing testimonials the last session was here's some stuff you can do on your profile go do the homework here's some we've talked about you can populate your education section and your interest section and that's a bit of a one-off thing this is an ongoing consistent massive action right stuff consistent part of your activity um, to be collecting testimonials we, we've just done this video testimonial with marlene we've been working together for 90 days she's got great results tangible results in a business i said well, here's a, a great way would you mind if i interviewed you on a zoom call so we could record it because then what you can do if you look further back up your profile you will see that i've got content you can upload features stuff i've got video here if we click on here i've got um video of me talking this guy gave me a testimonial when i was a business coach i'm going back probably 14 years but it's a nice testimonial about how he reckoned working together changed his life um you can upload content into your profile so why not upload some of those video testimonials which i've done there but heads up video now we'll touch on posts but we're going to delve into posts in a lot more detail on the next session because in the last two years we have pioneered something unique that allows you and you can have a look at that video there how to get thousands of views of your posts and we'll talk about that in more detail um, but i've used that system you'll see here to get engagement on these featured bits of content i call them content or assets marketing assets you can send to people now most people you'll see there's nothing on that why you should be using linkedin because there's an article it sits there on your profile at the top people will see it but not many unless they jump on your profile and click and see it a lot of people are surfing i had someone contact me he said yeah i haven't engaged with you but i've been reading your post for three months and i need help but you never liked commented engaged no i don't do that i'm just looking for the information i want so you don't know how many people might see these but this one here with 33 likes 11 comments i use through my post party club system just for if people see that oh this guy must be good he's getting engagement on his on his content a bit more credibility but you can upload assets you can upload content here into the featured section but then also on the last session we talked about how to split your experience section to make it easy for people to find the information they want i mentioned an insurance salesman where he split the experience section into commercial insurance talking about insuring your white van underneath here uh, private insurance how to insure your swimming pool to make it easy for people to find it because i'm not interested in reading about your van if i want to insure my swimming pool and under each of these sections look you can upload content that's a link it tells you that it's a link to uh, a video so you can upload documents you can upload video you need to be populating these sections with content if i show the six experiences all within um, you'll see around my linkedin business if my internet's quick enough i've actually split it's the same business webinar and events i specialize in um post party club i've talked i've mentioned um getting consistent business where how i'm working with marlene it's all the same business linkedin mastery for property investors it's an online course i put together linkedin trainer and coach it's all the same business except this one i was a franchisor but then underneath, I've got property investor and deal broker. Same principle, write it in the same way and upload content. Interesting, I need to look at that. But that's a great video testimonial of a property investor and a property investor author of a book talking about how much results he got from me and him working together. So I've put a testimonial from a property investor under my section about property investing. I trust I'm making the point. Um, and then this is the same company I have. But I'm also want to write about how I can speak, and what benefit you'll get from booking me to speak at your conference. And here's some testimonials. So populate it all with the same assets because we'll come on to messaging in a moment. 
Um, and we are sending out assets like this in our direct messages. I will touch on those in a moment. So you can scroll down all of those. And by the way, the last one goes back 20 years to when I was a branch sales manager employed. I haven't gone back beyond that because you're not interested in the fact that I've worked in a warehouse packing gloves at the age of 17. Um, make it relevant to your audience. Trust that makes sense. What do they say? Never work with animals and kids. Here we go. It's a little, uh, it's a little bit slow. Is that now? Is that now? There we go. Um, volunteering skills. So I've covered recommendations and testimonials. And again, publications. I've said make them work, populate them. Now, if you haven't written an article or a, pub or a publication, you haven't published a, a, a thesis, you haven't written a book, you can still upload something here. You can write an, a post. You could write an article that goes up at the, the top we've talked about and put it in here. Uh, organizations. Um, I'm a member of the Institute of Sales and Marketing Management. I said that in the last session, don't put your letters after your name in your name for a bunch of reasons. Go watch that and explain why, but put it down here. Camera. <laughs> Camera is stands, for, stands for the campaign for real ale in the UK. And I put that up there because I'm passionate about real ale. I'm flying back from Spain because I've been here three months and I'm missing English beer. Um, but again, it's about creating rapport. I can have a bit of humor with some of my prospects. Some people have seen it. Uh, I'm a member of the Royal British Legion. I'm passionate about helping veterans. And um, I'm a, I also ride a motorbike, motorcycle. So there's lots there that A, will get found in search terms. That is what LinkedIn will chuck at other people saying, you might know this person because you've got something in common. And then as far as interests, I don't follow lots of influencers. I don't have the time to read lots of stuff, but I trained with Tony Robbins. He, he had a massive impact in my life, one of the, the world's best peak performance coach. And then I obviously follow um, Reid Hoffman, was one of the founders of LinkedIn. Um, so you need to populate each of those sections. And so you need to give it some time, and just diarize it aside and think about it. And here's what I'll say to you again. When you've gone through all those changes, first of all, connect with me. You need to connect with Grant. Um, I think he has slightly more or less connections than I have, but you'll see here what happens is, and I'm scrolling up and down fast, LinkedIn tells you I've got 500 plus connections. But actually, when you scroll down, it tells you somewhere under here, I have 22,000 followers. Followers and connections are pretty much the same number. A few people can choose to follow you. Uh, it's probably unless you set it all to followers at 30,000 that's it you can only have people follow you um, but the reality is if you connect with me you and I become first tier connections second tier connections are who I want to connect with I don't connect with third tier third tier is someone who's connected to someone who's connected to you because it's too convoluted if I connect with a second tier connection by default we have mutual connections. There's a second tier connection is a connection of someone I'm connected to. So my connection message can read, hey, came across your profile, hoped we could connect, especially as we share some great mutual connections because it's a given. So I can make it more engaging than just a cold connection message. But So if you connect with me now, you grow your connections by one, me. But you grow your second tier by over 22,000. And the same you want to be connecting with Grant and the same with Marlon Powell because the content they're putting out there and they've got will help you in your business. When you connect with me, you will get an automated message. I use some automation in that. I'll keep mentioning that. The moment you message me inbound, I will respond. I guarantee it. That's what I do each day. I pick up my inbound messages like I pick up emails and I respond to everybody. As and when, not if and when, as and when you work through this profile, if you want to drop me a message and say, hey, can you give me a review? Can you check it? I don't mean a recommendation. I mean a, a, a critique of my profile. I'll, I'll give you some feedback on how you can make it more powerful because here's what will happen. The moment you're populating this, more people will see your profile. And by the way, set your settings so that your connections can see your changes. Get notified when you change something. I have people who are a bit risk averse saying, well, I don't want to, I don't want LinkedIn to push it out. If I haven't finished it, editing it and it's pushing it out two or three times, if I edit it over two or three days, get out your own way. Most people won't see the notifications. And if they see it twice, what are they like to say? 
blimey, John, you're making some changes to your profile. Yeah, I am actually. Do you want to have a chat about how I might be able to help you? So let it get pushed out there. But that aside, the moment you start to make these changes, you write your profile, your about section, your, your experience sections in a way that's full of with them from a marketing perspective, telling the audience who you work with, how you help them. The moment you populate this, more people will see your profile. And I said, one of the things you want to be doing as well is connecting with everybody who views your profile. Again, I automate that. Now, I have some people, there's always exceptions, but I have some people going, well, I saw it today on a post. Oh, I'm very fussy about who I connect with. Well, why? Because you never know who else you might be looking for. I said I found a Spanish lawyer, Spanish mortgage broker. My nephew got an internship in Hong Kong from the UK. If I want to find something, I can jump on LinkedIn. I, I will keep building my connections. If somebody views my profile from India, who's got 5,000 connections, but he's selling websites, I don't care. I'll connect. I'll accept his invite because I've now got his 5,000 connections can show up in future searches and I can find people and you never know who. The world is smaller. You can see my trading name is Three Degrees Social because if you've heard of the principle of the six degrees of separation, it says we're no more than six people away from anybody in the world and it's been proven over and over again. I'm four steps from a majesty, the queen of England because I have a client, which is step one, who has a client that is a saddler, makes horse saddles, step two. He sells saddles to Prince Charles, step three. Prince Charles, his mom is the Queen of England, step four. I could get a message to the Queen of England through four steps, whether she'll read it or open it or not, and she doesn't know. But the principle I make, if you Google that now, it says it's nearer three degrees of separation within social media and especially LinkedIn. You can get to anybody in the world. You can find anybody. So I always want to be connecting. So I will accept all inbound invites. And again, I automate some messages going out to them when we're connected. I will connect with everyone who's viewed my profile. But here's my message tweak. Hey, I noticed you viewed my profile recently. I'm just wondering what interested you to do so and how I might be able to help. Grant and I were just talking about his, the size of his database, his email database, how massive it is. He's built it up over years. He's an incredible job. Uh, he said, I always get somebody sort of complain when a bunch of emails go out. I said, I have, I have a friend who's, who's, who's a master at writing content. He says, if your content is not upsetting or you don't get a bit of flack back from some of your content, then you're probably not writing it powerfully enough. You can't please all of the people all the time. Everybody's different. Everybody thinks. I had somebody the other day, we ran a big webinar with a lot of marketing. Someone said, um, this is spam. And I just emailed back only because I had a coffee break. Normally, I wouldn't bother. They have an unsubscribe button. Why are you even messaging me if you've got an issue? I said, no, it isn't. She said, yeah, and came back with war and peace as to why it is. Well, go Google the definition. With LinkedIn, it can't be spam, can it? You can send a crappy message that upsets people or, or, or turns people off. And people say to me, well, I won't connect with the web designer in India because I'm just getting bombarded with sales messages. Well, ignore them. It's just like email. You don't have to reply to them. I said, but it's not spam. You and I have connected. You've either asked to connect with me and I've accepted, or I've asked to connect with you and you've accepted. So I'm just messaging you through LinkedIn. So my message to people who have viewed is, hey, you viewed my profile recently, wondering what interested you to do. So 99% of people haven't got a clue. They're just surfing around. I had someone the other day said, well, I'm just looking to build my, my network. Really? What's the real reason? What's the bottom line reason? I said, in, in what way? For what reason? Well, I'm just looking to build my network. And I just gave up trying to, trying to help him. Um, but you need to be building your connections. And I talked about the search before on how you can do that. Now, I'm thinking of the best way uh, to make some sort of a, I was going to say an offer. I've got, in fact, I have a free Facebook group called LinkedIn Mastery. Ironic is on Facebook, but actually a year or so ago, I would have said to you, my people advisors around me are saying you get more engagement on Facebook groups than LinkedIn groups, which is true. I'm, I'm, we're now getting less and less engagement within Facebook groups, let alone LinkedIn. People are just bombarded, I think. But I have a free Facebook group called LinkedIn um, Mastery. Within there, I've got files and resources. I've got crib sheets on how to write messages. I've got crib sheets on how to write this, the profile we've talked through. Go and join that and have a look at the stuff. 
but connect with me. You will need shooting. Grant has permission to shoot you if you do not connect with me, him and Marlene Powell, um, because you will grow your second tier connections massively. Um, and if you, the average CEO, according to Google, has about 900 and something connections. So if, you, if he's got nearly a thousand connections and each of those connections have a thousand connections, he's got a million second tier connections. Go, go figure. If I've got, what have I got, 22,000 connections, each of those have got a, a thousand connections. Yes, there's going to be a lot of crossover, but that's up to 20 million second tier connections. Three times the usage of South Africa, so the usage of the UK, it's stunning, it's huge. It's not too good to be true. It's good enough to be true. I really want to urge you to take some action on this. So when you connect with me, you'll get some automated messages. But when you've worked on your profile, drop me a message, say, hey, would you have a look? And however we can help, because on the next session, because one of the things I will briefly touch on for the next few minutes, and we're going to delve deeper into on the next one, because it is it is unique. Um, when you look at activity here, this shows up people. This was Grant posted yesterday about today's session. So I just it said here, I, I reshared it. Um, and that was somebody's comment. I commented on this post. Uh, this was about the 100. He reckons you can only send 100 invites out a week. No, and we're sending up to 200 for Marlene. Um, it's variable. We, we test it, whatever. But you can show all activity here. And you can look at people's content and their posts. And what it does is shows all activity. What I'm typically, this is, if you click on, you'll see my articles, my documents. But what I'm typically looking for with with other people on other people's profile is their posts and the internet's very slow there we go um so you can see the posts that i have posted no you can't it still says all activity um so let's look at posts because i just want to show you there has been a massive surge again since covid everyone was online the challenge is two things one is most people's posts don't get much exposure because LinkedIn wants unique content as well as you unique engagement. So what link and LinkedIn wants good content. And how does it gauge whether it's got good content? Well, it will push your post out to a fraction of your about 10% of your connections to test it. And if you get engagement from your connections your network that you engage back on very quickly it goes this must be good content will boost it out and we've pioneered um what we've called the post party club i'll talk about it more on the next one but the point i make is you can see here this was a post that i did um the other week and it's got over 50 comments and um 28 likes and 4,000 impressions impressions are the same as views if you're just getting a few hundred or the odd thousand, that should grow. We've got members getting tens of thousands of impressions and views. Then we need to look at what you're doing with posting because the reality is mm, explosion of people posting of COVID, but they're posting poor content. We pioneered this of how to get thousands of views of your posts. But then what we discovered two and a half years ago is all our members were saying, well, that's great, but we're still not getting inbound engagement. So what we're going to cover on the next session is how to write posts and content that gets you engagement, that converts. It's one thing getting tapping LinkedIn's algorithm so we can get it out there and people can see your posts. But massive action, great. We've got the massive action, 4,000 views. Right stuff. If your post doesn't get you inbound, comments. And the way I wrote this post, I got 15 inbound leads within three days. Then it's the wrong content. So we're going to cover more of that on the next session. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm very conscious of time. Um, I'm going to hand back to Grant. We can look at any questions we've got. I just want to reinforce again, connect with the three of us and then make some changes on that profile. You will get more people viewing your profile. You will get more people asking to connect. You can build your connect work. Yes, we'll come on to sales messages and how to learn to engage in the right way and how to turn around people that just seem ineffective. Um, make sense, Grant? <clears throat> Andy, it's making 100% too much sense almost. You know, um, it's basically everything that you say and do is exactly the way that I embrace marketing and, and, and selling ourselves. And basically going back to that very, very basic thing is that, you know, most of us in, in business are so busy bragging about what we do instead of asking our clients, 
what on earth they want. So if you ask your client, you know, Standard Bank is, is my biggest sponsor here for the KZN Top Business Awards. And they had a, a catchphrase on a campaign five years ago, and I still use it. And you start off, how can I help you? And they will tell you exactly what you want. And the same in all the campaigns. Um, interesting, uh, on, on, on the content marketing side of things that we use LinkedIn quite, quite uh, intensively. Um, I'm just having a look at the stats on my phone here. In the last seven days, we've had 2,500 impressions on our posts. Um, and you can see that measurement coming back to the stats on the, on the KZN Top Business website because 25% of the people hitting our site, and there's a lot of people hitting it, come from LinkedIn. And that's just by engaging our posts in a way, the, exactly the way the manner in which you said it, is asking the questions, getting interactive. I still want to get the secret of you make it sound a lot easier, so I'm quite keen to listen to the next post party thing because we work quite hard at getting it, but it, it works and it works exceptionally well. So, um, Andy, on that side, absolutely brilliant. Um, any other comments on that, Andy? Um, no, it, it just, it does. It's, this is why I love working with you guys, because you're right. It's, it's looking at, it's refreshing to be talking with someone else who really knows that marketing is about talking about what's your pain, what is it you're really looking for, what are you struggling with? In other words, how can I help you? um and that's the core linkedin's just the platform the power of it is it's multifaceted it's like a game of chess it's easy to understand but it's as deep as you want to take it and there's so many different facets and we're now in a position and we will cover post party because it's it's unique in the world it's powerful um and we've got a couple of unique things but it's just a platform you know the way i'm working with clients when and we'll come on to this on the next session how to craft messages I run a webinar called how to get more business on LinkedIn without being pushy or salesy because so many people go, I don't want to be pushy or salesy. It's not about that. It's about writing a message that gives value, give an asset, give something to people and you'll get inbound. And we'll talk about, I'll share the magic messages. I'll share what we do on that. It's just learning how to market because it's then the same with your phone calls, same with your website, same with your emails. And that's people's biggest challenge um but also just thinking about what can i do with linkedin i've got clients where linkedin is just their only strategy because within that there's so many other sub strategies we, we're touching on i'm not saying it should be you should have other strategies and marlene again will talk to people about what else but so many of them now integrate i had a call with a lady yesterday we knew she she said and i knew she'd been on a big webinar i ran last week but i said how did you come to be invited by the webinar to the webinar she went i've no idea she couldn't remember well, we've got emails going out, we've got LinkedIn, we've got emails from LinkedIn profiles, we've got Eventbrite doing stuff, we've got referrals. You don't know now, you just, you've just got to keep doing it. But you can track people with LinkedIn because you can, like you say, you know, people go to your site from LinkedIn. It's, it's about mm -hmm. doing it and building on. You can get massive action, massive results straight away. Crack the right stuff and you'll get even more. But over time with that consistency, You've got to start doing it now. Back to that guy who booked a call with me. Not on my database. No, we're not connected on LinkedIn. He said, no, I've been reading your post for the last three months and now I need some help. You've never mm. engaged. You've never liked it. No, I don't do that. I, re I find the people use LinkedIn as a, re as a resource tool. He said, I was looking for the information I needed. Now I need help. I've contacted you. So if you're not, if you're not in it, you've got to be in it to win it. If you're not consistently connecting and engaging and posting, then... And I'm not doing this to say, let's hope that in three months time, you get the odd inbound from somebody who's been reading your stuff. That's that's peripheral. If we stick to the three lane motorway and power up that, it's about get your profile right that we've covered now. Next session, we'll talk more about connecting and engaging and writing posts to get people inbound. Um, that's powering up the three lanes of the highway, the motorway. The peripheral stuff is beautiful when it happens. What do you reckon? Yeah, you know, I I think, my, my earbuds went flat, Andy. We've been almost an hour. <laughs> uh, okay. I think, um, I think to I, I, there's a question, Andy, that, that somebody posted earlier, and I can't find it, but the relevance of using a video in a, in a post and how effective that is. Um, and to answer that question from my point of view, when, when I send out mass email or whatever it might be, when I do a video with content versus content on its own 
it's almost a 95% hit ratio on the one with the video. Um, I sort of equate it to the fact that most people on my website, 92% of the people going to the websites these days are doing it on their mobile. So when you're scrolling down and you come to a video, it automatically starts playing. So if Andy has a post with a video, it'll start talking. You stop and you listen to what Andy says, and you say hello, and you listen to it, and then you click the post and read. Then you have the click on ratio. So it's the most effective form of marketing that you can do. I see LinkedIn now have got a little icon on their, on their, um, on your profile pic, and you know, have you seen it? But they're op offering you an opportunity to put that 30 seconds um, interview or, or profile or whatever you want to call it, use it. And do you know what? Do you know, I, I haven't got around to it, but do you know what? I've just, I've just contacted a guy I need to speak with, got a lot of con contacts and he'd done it and I clicked on it and it was awful. He'd not done himself service. So it's about the right stuff again. Definitely use it, but it's learning how to be good at a 30 second heads up. Um, and we will cover more of that on the next, next session as well. There is a question here from Andrew Schaefer. My main concern with LinkedIn are the deluge of unsolicited marketing messages which arise when accepting invitations to connect. How can this be better managed or is it necessary to decide on the relevance of the contact before accepting? Great question, Andrew. And I think a covered part of it is that I accept every connection for the reasons of building connections. LinkedIn's messaging inbox system isn't, isn't the most smoothest CRM system. It's not a CRM system in the world. So the way I manage it is, if it's, a, if it's an unsolicited, it's not, is it unsolicited? If they've sent you a mark a marketing message you're not interested in, when I click on it to read it, then it shows up as open. So what I have is two tabs, two LinkedIn tabs open. One of them, you can select your message inbox as unread. So I can see all the unread ones. So if I've then replied to someone who I want to keep in there, because I haven't put them into my CRM yet, because we haven't really engaged enough, I'll just tag it as unread. So I can see all the ones that have just come in that I need to respond to or just click on and open because it's unsolicited and I'm not bothered. Because then when I refresh my unread, he, that, that deluge of marketing messages have gone. If I've replied to someone and I think I want to follow them up, I'll just retag it as unread. I keep one window open with my unread messages. The other window then is if I'm looking at someone's profiles or doing stuff. Because the only caveat is if you have your tab message box open on unread and then you click through to something else and go back to unread it will have opened the top one and you might lose it we certainly will because we are sending out like i said to for marlene not just 40 connection invites a day and then messages we're sending out messages to 100 of our connections every day can, engaging with people it's not uns it is unsolicited unsolicited they haven't asked for it but it's engaging i'm going to show you how to write engaging content so that they're not those marketing messages, they're nice communication messages. Next session. Um, so we've got lots of messages that have gone out. So when you just look at your message box, you won't see the ones that are unread and the new ones. So I keep a tab, a window open of just unread messages. So I think the answer to your question is, yeah, you click on it, you go, I don't, I'm not interested in this. Well, then it's, then it's, then it's open and read. And if I keep just refreshing my unread ones, I don't see it. That's the way I've been managing it for years. Um, it's like email, isn't it? I get a lot of emails I'm not interested in. I just delete them. Um, you can't easily delete messages, but once they're open, I'm, I'm just focusing on unread. Hope that, hope that makes sense. Um, and again, in the next session, I'm conscious of time. If the question's still there, we, I can show you on screen share. If, if, if you need any, any, I've said, let me critique your profiles. Andrew, if you have a look at it and you're still stuck, just drop me a LinkedIn message. I'll record a quick video and send it to you, or we can have a conversation. We can sort it. I'll show you how I'm managing my inbox. In fact, Mate, I'll do that on the next session as well. Yeah, Andy, because I, I had the same problem. I'd like to see your solution there. Um, there was just right. another quick one before we, we before we get to are coming to the end here. A very interesting one. We've all got a personal profile, company profile. What do you find is the best? Gail asked the question. I've obviously got four or five company and I've got, I've got my own. And I find that depending on what I'm selling or what I'm promoting, I use it differently. So, so that's how I use it. They have, both have different purposes. What's your experience on that, Andy? Well, my, um, oh, I can see the questions up there. I was looking here in chats rather than Q&A, I got you. Um, just very quickly. 
I'd, my take on company pages is they've always been there and there's a lot of big corporates on LinkedIn and they could argue that my my clients and prospects would accept expect to see one for most small businesses and the, the challenge then is I've said with posts post party club and we'll talk about next session the algorithm is only sound on your personal profile so you've got to be posting out on your personal profile but when I'm promoting events and we'll come on to that in future sessions the goal in events to get attendees is by publishing the event on your company page as a so i need them both I, I can argue people don't expect to see my company page if you google my name you'll find my website you'll find my personal profile you know if you googled i don't know whichever company you'll find someone's personal profile uh, and we're talking mainly SME businesses. If you've got a company page, LinkedIn's original thing about it was you've got to get track followers and then you've got to push out content. Well, we said, let's grow connections and push out content. And we've tapped the algorithm to get massive exposure of that content. So I would say to most people, you don't need a company page unless you're publishing events and trying to market into events. If you've set one up as a bit of a landing page and people can see it, because otherwise you've got to keep building followers and keep pushing out content. Well, how do I build, you know, where do I devote my time? Building followers to my company page or building connections on mine and my key key workers, my co-directors profiles. So I wouldn't worry about company pages. If you've got any detailed questions about that, just, just message me and we can look at, because they're obviously always exceptions. Someone's asked, do I need a premium account? Not if you're going to do stuff yourself manually. I only use sales. Now, LinkedIn is out there trying to sell all this stuff. Again, corporates might argue that they're getting some value i only use sales navigator because i need their search function which is which is good brilliant and i only use that because i have automation that then logs into my profile goes connect with those search contacts goes messages those other search safe search contacts so if you're going to scale this up for massive action consistently then you need to automate it and if you need if you're going to automate it we need sales navigate now i, I met a corporate person um business they said they just bought a hundred sales navigator accounts they've spent about a hundred grand and when we talked through the detail we could have managed with a handful and i could have helped them automate and they could have paid me a lot less than the hundred grand and i'd have still made a lot of money so um no if you're going to do stuff when i say consistency fairly spasmodically if you want consistency of connecting every day messaging every day consistent consistent you need to automate if you're going to do it yourself manually you, you don't need premium to begin with go knock yourself out with what we've covered and what we're going to cover on the next session because you that's that's what i did 12 years ago up until five or six years ago so no you don't need it linkedin are constantly saying have a free trial and someone just cancelled you can have, get it half price no, no, no. And we'll, we'll, we'll cover more of that on the next session as well. So, so Andy, the, the answer is no. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need it. Thanks, mate. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Andy, thank you very, very much for, for uh, joining us on KZN Top Business Masterclass with LinkedIn. It was incredible. You're welcome, Grant. And, and have a great month, everybody. And look forward to the next one. All right. Cheers, everybody.